Hey everyone, Eric Thompson here with uh, Mrs. Thompson, Tori Thompson, Mrs. E.T. Film Review. Welcome back to the channel on this, um, the fourth installation of the BTSD. What does that stand for? Book to Screen Differential. Thank you. Of course, before we get any further, uh, I want to say one. We sure hope that you are doing well. Two, today is... It is almost Monday, the 23rd. <laughs> what does this mean? Um, the baby stuff, you mean? Baby was due, due yesterday, so it's we're, we're going to at least 40 weeks and two days, for sure, at this point. We're going to see Dr. Joe tomorrow, mm -hmm. on the 23rd, and say, DJ, what's up? And he will say, well, and then he'll say something. In there. So there it is. Um, you feeling okay? Yeah, um, I mean, I'm ready to not have a baby inside me, but I'm feeling okay. I'm hanging in there pretty well. Maybe tomorrow, if we have time, we should do a video of, I don't know, the final days of non, non parenthood. I tried a, a dance, labor dance today, so maybe we'll get some, some of that action recorded. Did you record it? No, I did not, but you. If you're home and I do it, you can record it. I will allow this. Excellent. <laughs> you heard it first. You heard it here on ATS One Review. Anyway, well, uh, thanks to all those who have uh, mistakenly clicked on this video, thinking it was about the baby, but <laughs> it is not. In fact, uh, we think we think all those you know who were praying for us and just sending along kind messages and <laughs> and all that. It's it's pretty cool. So uh, we'll stay. In touch and updated as much as we can. Now, have you watched any of these videos that Jenny has been doing for us? I have, yes. Your thoughts? I think she's been doing a good job. I think so too. And so let's get on with it. She's she's been an excellent guest. I'm very excited for Rachel, of course, next up with Harry Potter, um, which I think I'm more familiar with than Twilight because I read the books, the Harry mm -hmm. Potter books, and the Twilight books. <laughs> Breaking Dawn, part one. Okay, Jenny had, uh, excuse me, I'm sorry. <laughs> Jenny, Jenny had, yes. Did you on? Yep, maybe. I think, I think, I started it. I think someone, I think someone just did in their home. Oh, they're they're oh. feeling silly. They're like, yeah. okay. <laughs> um, Jenny had contemplated doing uh, Breaking Dawn in two, in one video, uh, but of course the film itself, significantly long, um, and the book also quite weighty. And so, she broke it up into two segments, just like the film, and so here, uh, without further, uh, what's it called, further ado? Yes. Further to do is uh, Breaking Dawn Part 1, okay? Jenny, take it away. Thanks. What do you say? Thank you. I don't know. <laughs> Thanks to who? Jenny. And? Everybody that's watching. Thank you. How about uh, Try That Kiss? Okay. Oh. <laughs> oh my God. That was a vampire kiss. <laughs> I was just kidding. Bye. Hey y'all, and we are back with our next bit in our Twilight series, um, Breaking Dawn. Voila. This is uh, my special edition book. Um, and I was actually lucky enough, uh, very lucky indeed, enough to um, meet Peter Fashionelli, who plays Carlisle. A uh, friend of mine, Josie, uh, the day before, was like, oh, you know, I heard Peter Fashionelli is going to be in Puyallup at the South Hill Mall. And I was like, wait, what? What time? She's like, 9 o'clock or something like that. I was like, we are going. And we totally went. I woke up at 6 o'clock to make sure that I was totally ready to go and purtified. And I made sure that Josie's butt was up and out of bed and ready to go. And we got there way early uh, to sit and, and wait. We got great spots in line and uh, we got to meet him and talk to him just a little bit. The line was like super long so we didn't get that much time with him but it was still an amazing experience. And I have his autograph here. Ah, so awesome! And uh, I also got a photo with him and it was really cool because uh, we actually matched. And he was like, oh my gosh, we match. And I was like, ah, totally freaked out. 
made me completely speechless. It was amazing. And uh, yeah, it was a, it was definitely an awesome experience. Josie and I had a flippin' blast. Um, but anyways, let's get down to it. Uh, question one. Is the movie a just representation of the book? Uh, for this one, yes and no. Um, there were some things that I wasn't quite okay with. Um, let's, so we'll jump down to, to question two. Uh, what did you miss from the book? that was not in the movie, so what was in the book that wasn't in the movie? Well, <clears throat> uh, let, let, let's just start with the wedding. They did that a little bit differently than, uh, than the book. Um, they did outside instead of, um, at least in my imagination, was inside the house um, uh, in the book. Uh, but they did an amazing job on that. I could not believe how awesome that turned out. Uh, the dress was a little bit weird for uh, for me. I didn't quite care for the dress, uh, in my imagination at least, the way it was described in the book. It was a lot prettier, um, but I mean, they, they of course they pulled it off. It looked awesome. Um, I also uh, wasn't quite sure uh, about the honeymoon uh, portion of it. Um, they did okay at the, at the start, and then it just it felt like there was something missing um, after that first night uh, that they were together there, and uh, the little bit where they stop um, as they're on their way, they make that weird little stop, and they're dancing in the street with all the people. That was a little bit strange. I think we could have done without that. Um, and then some of the destinations um, during during the honeymoon. Um, after Edward and Bella's first night together and Edward's like, oh my gosh, no, I can't do that again uh, because I'm going to hurt you. So he makes all these excuses and, and plans all these, these trips and stuff like that throughout this island that they're on um, to avoid that at all costs. Um, he wears her out so that she just passes right out when they get home. Um, uh, I think some of the spots that they, that they used... Um, just, they didn't quite do it for me. Uh, they should have tried to stick a little bit more to what was described in the books. Uh, well, I guess in the book it's a really fat book. Uh, <laughs> uh, they definitely could have could have stuck to it a little bit better um, than they did. Um, Edward's freakout was pretty impressive, though. Uh, that definitely sat on cue with the book. Um, was not expecting. Uh, that to go quite as as well as it did in the movie. Uh, but one thing I was kind of upset about was uh, the fact that they they kind of rushed through the Jacob portion a little bit, um, and and kind of mushed the Jacob portion with the Bella coming home portion. Um, being as in the book, you don't really there's not really a way. Well, she didn't put it in the book as as things that were going on simultaneously. Um, so I feel the way that they did it in the book, there was some stuff that was missed out on, um, especially, uh, Jacob's, my favorite part of, of Jacob's book, uh, which was, uh, his trip to Gasworks Park, um, because he, he feels that if he can just go and get out and, and maybe try and look at and see other women, uh, that aren't in his little corner of the state, um, maybe he can imprint on someone that way and, um, and, and then he won't hurt over Bella anymore. Um, but unfortunately it does not quite work out that way and, um, he returns, uh, with no luck, um, but I, I definitely could have used more of, of that insight that you get with that portion of Jacob's book. You really, you get to see the dynamic between Jacob and the rest of the pack a lot better. You get to um, really experience the depth of emotion that Jacob has for Bella. And um, I just don't think you get that in, in the movie. Um, it just especially when you're watching the movie, it just feels kind of like they just kind of graze over Jacob's portion of the book, um, and they don't, they don't, um, give you enough, 
of, uh, of what he's going through. And uh, so uh, by the time you get to the uh, end of the movie, you're just kind of like, oh cool, well Jacob is in there and blah blah. Uh, he imprints on Renesme and that's pretty cool. Um, but it's, it's not something that really imprints into your own mind. Uh, you don't really recall it uh, like you do the rest of the book. Um, they did do pretty good though on, uh, on Bella's pregnancy. I was pretty impressed. Um, she definitely looked like crap. Excuse my language, but she looked horrible. Uh, and um, uh, the, uh, the birthing. Uh, that actually was was pretty impressive too. That was pretty right on the book, um, so uh, no miss outs there. Um, but let's get to question three really quick. Uh, we, uh, what did you, which did you prefer, the book or the movie? On this, I definitely prefer the book because I definitely love that that insight that you get with uh, with Jacob, and uh, you just miss out on that too much in in the movie. Um, that. I just love my own little inner IMAX that I get when I read. <laughs> uh, but uh, anyways, yep, that's my verdict. I love the book more than I do the movie, but the movie is not bad. It's actually fairly decent. Um, they didn't do a too bad a job on that one. So we will be back next week with the second portion of this fat, massive book. And uh, we'll talk about the rebirth of Bella and... Uh, all that good fun stuff. <laughs> All right, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.